from making a point out of embracing their inner Dr. Doolittle during production, to taking strange inspiration from their fellow acting sensations when it came time to seriously pile on the pounds. These are some of the insane lengths various performers went to for flicks that just recently landed in cinemas and the streaming world. Gareth here from WhatCulture.com and here are 10 actors who went to absurd lengths for recent movies. Number 10, Sigourney Weaver went back to high school for Kiri, Avatar The Way of Water. The moment it became clear that Sigourney Weaver was set to return in the follow-up to James Cameron's record-breaking Avatar, fans quickly found themselves wondering how in the hell the mind behind Pandora would inject this star back into the Way of Water action. Dr. Grace Augustine did very much bite the dust in that first outing after all. Rather than simply reviving Grace for this 2022 sequel, however, the director decided to introduce a new character by the name of Kiri, a 14-year-old who was the daughter of Grace's Navi avatar. Instead of having a youngster do the motion capture and have Weaver just vocally play the part, though, Cameron felt his star was more than up for the challenge of fully diving into the teen role, telling her she had always been 14 at heart. Determined to give her all to the part of Jake and Neytiri's adopted daughter, Weaver proceeded to very much go back to high school, sitting in on classes so she could figure out the pitch of Kiri's voice. And not Stop in there, the alien's icon also embraced everything from breath-holding training to learning parkour in order to authentically keep up with their younger co-stars. Number 9, Amber Midthunder went through a four-week boot camp and learned a new sign language and so much more, pray. As the Nauru sensation Amber Midthunder would recall later down the road, getting into predator-killing shape for last year's epic Prey prequel isn't exactly a walk in the woods. And despite being put through a four-week training camp with her co-stars that consisted of them working with tomahawks, spears, and bow and arrows, that still likely didn't fully prepare all involved for the grueling filming process heading their way, with Amber noting how intense action was being shot every single day. One day, the star would be running 90 degrees up a hill, the next she'd be swimming in literally arctic glacial runoff water. Simply put, at no point in the shoot did the 25-year-old think, ah, today's just chill. A new hybrid sign language was also created for the film's Comanche 2, with the actors and folks behind the scenes combining our own sign language with the Comanches in the lead-up. Clearly, no corners were cut when it came to taking down this particular predator. Number 8. Christian Bale became a full-blown stalker, Amsterdam Christian Bale prepared for the role of Bert in last year's Amsterdam in a rather peculiar way, it must be said. As the Dark Knight star himself revealed around the time of the eventual flop of a comedy mystery drama's release, his fascination with people led down a particularly weird path this time around, with the Oscar winner picking up a lot of strange behavior following people around on the street. And that is how he put it. Before he knew it, the thespian had become a full-blown quote-unquote weirdo stalker, wandering after a civilian and studying the figure Bale would ultimately class as a big influence. So the next time you spot this particularly committed performer following a random stranger on the street with a notepad, don't be alarmed, he's just character building, yeah. Number 7, Jonathan Majors didn't pack on the muscle to lift Starif Home, Creed 3 and Magazine Dreams. Playing both a bodybuilder and professional boxer in Magazine Dreams and Creed 3, respectively, Jonathan Majors definitely wasn't content with phoning it in. And after spending the past year ultimately packing on a whopping 21 pounds of muscle for his various 2023 outings, the idea of lifting fake weights once the camera started rolling had the star telling those involved, you're effing kidding me. The star didn't spend a ridiculous amount of time carving out his equally absurd physique just to rock up to set and use styrofoam, as he put it. So the real deal was thrown onto the bar on the day, and Majors was able to authentically tell the story he wanted to after getting his body into legit weightlifting shape. Number 6. Brendan Fraser wore a 300-pound fat suit, The Whale. Rather than donning a fat suit similar to the sort often found in comedy flicks, one that typically defies gravity, Fraser, director Darren Aronofsky, and the rest of the team opted for a far more legitimate suit when creating the heavy physique of the leading character. In the end, after trying to pack on enough weight for the role and still not convincingly looking like a 600-pound human, a suit that weighed a staggering 300 pounds was created for Fraser. The prosthetic was packed full of everything from airsoft pellets to marbles in order to nail the desired effect of the character believably carrying around such a great weight. Number 5. Colin Farrell started talking to animals, the Banshees of Inishirin. Signing off 2022 with yet another utterly outstanding performance as Podrick in Martin McDonough's The Banshees of Inishirin, Colin Farrell's connection with the precious donkey known as Jenny was easily one of the sweetest and most moving committed to screens in recent times. And a serious amount of dedication actually went into creating a character that convincingly shared a bond with the creatures he regularly shared the screen with. In fact, Farrell would eventually confess to going fully method during the shoot, embracing his inner Doctor Doolittle 
during his regular runs up and down the Inish Moor and Achel Islands they were shooting on. The Irish Golden Globe winner explained that he made a point of saying hello to absolutely every single animal he passed on his jogs. With every cow, duck, sheep and of course donkey being met with a how are you lads? This all helped Farrell build a connection with the natural world as Podrick and to his own aloneness too. Which was apparently a powerful way into the role of the ultimately ignored farmer and drinking pal of Brendan Gleeson's Colton Doherty. Who needs pals when you've got a few talkative quackers and bleaters, eh? Number 4, Arna de Armas went all in on Marilyn Monroe, blonde. To say Arna de Armas entirely threw herself into the role of the iconic Marilyn Monroe would be a bit of an understatement, wouldn't it? With English not being the actor's first language, de Armas first had to fully immerse herself in both the language and Monroe's specific way of speaking it. So on top of watching a ton of Monroe flicks, and studying a photographic Bible put together by director Andrew Dominic, the No Time to Die and Knives Out star also spent two hours a day with her dialect coach, working on producing a voice that would fit the legendary figure. And on her first day shooting the biographical drama, Diarmas and the rest of the crew also decided to all sign a card before making a pilgrimage to Monroe's grave in LA, with the actor later revealing that this was their way of asking permission to tell her story. After diving into such dark places and living with Marilyn for both the time she spent prepping and the nine week shoot itself, Diamas also confessed to finding it difficult to shake Monroe afterwards, noting how she couldn't say goodbye once the divisive film had wrapped. Number 3, Helen Mirren broke her finger and didn't tell anyone, Shazam! Fury of the Gods. She may be well into her 70s and have very little left to prove on the big screen, but that still couldn't stop the timeless Helen Mirren from fully committing to her fair share of stunt sequences in the newest slice of DCEU action that is Shazam! Fury of the Gods. But it was that willingness to get a little stunty as she put it, which ultimately led to the 77-year-old unfortunately breaking a finger on the set of the Shazam sequel. Not wanting to cause a fuss and simply getting on with the shoot as planned though, the badass Hespera actor confessed to being incredibly brave and not complaining or even mentioning her newly created Shazam finger to anyone on set. Miriam had also gone on to tell the Graham Norton show recently that herself and fellow angry goddesses Lucy Liu and Rachel Ziegler were all forced to wear unbelievably heavy costumes, with Liu in particular remarking at the end of the rather hot and uncomfortable first day on set that they are trying to kill us in all seriousness. It'll take a little more than a broken finger and some weighty suits to keep these goddesses down though. Number 2, Kate Blanchett conducted a very real orchestra, Tar. Fully taking on the challenge of executing your own stunts is one often incredibly challenging thing, but opting to actually attempt to genuinely conduct a live orchestra in front of a camera is something else entirely. However, that's something Kate Blanchett incredibly managed to pull off on the back of training with real life conductor Natalie Murray Beale in the lead up to shooting the eventual critical smash that would become Tar. Murray Beale would actually even go as far as to admit that Blanchett became so skilled in the art when fleshing out her world famous Lydia Tar figure over the course of the production that she could now very much conduct for realsies going forward if she fancied it. Blanchett ended up getting so caught up in all things conducting that she even found herself dreaming about the act, with the star waking up at 3.30am in the morning with her hands in the air on some occasions. And while the thespian tipped for Oscar glory this year would also admit to the scenario, involving her actually having to expertly and confidently guide an orchestra being an absolutely terrifying one, it was something she would still eventually class as a life-changing and unforgettable experience. Number 1, Austin Butler went full Ryan Gosling, Elvis. With Austin Butler already picking up a BAFTA and being nominated for an Academy Award for his outstanding work in bringing the king to life in Baz Luhrmann's Elvis picture, it's clear all of the freakishly talented lad's hugely committed work has not gone unnoticed. The sheer amount of time, effort and energy Butler put into bringing the titular legend to life has been talked about almost as much as the flick itself. The leading man not only practiced karate every day, learned how to swing and tap dance, and struggled to get rid of the unmistakable star's vocal quality in the wake of rap in the film, I thank you very much, but he also wound up in hospital the day after he'd finished shooting, claiming his body just started shutting down the day after I finished Elvis. And in what simply acts as the latest bizarre piece of trivia that will no doubt help further immortalize the frankly ridiculous levels of dedication found in Butler's hip-shaking preparations, it turns out that the star also went full Ryan Gosling and chugged tubs of microwaved ice cream when trying to gain weight for Elvis's older and heavier years too. That hospital Stint post shoot is starting to make a little bit more sense now, isn't it? And that's our list. Know of any other actors who went to absurd lengths for recent movies? Then let us know all about them in the comment section right down below. And do not forget to like, share, and click on that subscribe button while you're at it. 
Also, if this kind of thing is your bag, then please head on over to whatculture.com and find some more fantastic articles just like the one this video you're watching right this second is based on. I've been Gareth from whatculture.com. Thank you as always for watching this absurd video today. Hopefully, I'll see your faces very, very soon. But in the meantime, just be good to yourself. Uh, bye bye.